Welcome to Second Congregational First Presbyterian Church, where we work to energize downtown Rockford and beyond with God's grace. A most warm welcome to all of you, especially if you are visiting with us tonight. We are grateful and blessed to be able to spend Christmas Eve with you, even in this digital and most holy space. Isaiah chapter 40 announces the anticipation we have for this night and for the day that is to come when God will make all things new. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. On this most special night, we celebrate God coming to us in human flesh, born a baby and a king. Even in the places where we feel most broken and alone, God is with us. God be with you. As our first reading comes from Isaiah. To the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep dark, um, just dark, um, darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, and authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. And he will come to establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore the zeal of the lord of hosts will do this joy to the world the lord is come let earth receive her king
it is time to gather the children around so we can hear our early word for this evening. And I have a special friend that I have with me who's going to help me. I want you to meet Mr. Donkey T. Donkey. He's not too shy, is he? Wait, wait, don't eat the straw. Don't eat the straw. Don't eat the straw. There is a legend that goes the night that Jesus was born at 12 midnight, the animals in the stable began to talk. And Mr. Donkey is going to help me tell that story. You're even in part of this. Did you know that? Yeah, you are. It began as a poem hundreds of years ago, and then it turned into a hymn, and it's called The Friendly Beasts. I'm not a singer, so I'll be reading it to you, okay? All righty. Jesus, our brother, strong and good, was humbly born in a stable rude, and the friendly beasts around him stood, Jesus, our brother, strong and good. I said the donkey with the shaggy and brown hair. I carried his mother up hill and down. I carried her safely to Bethlehem town. I said the donkey, shaggy and brown. I said the cow, all white and red. I gave him my manger for his bed. I give him hay to pillow his head. I said the cow, all white and red. I said the sheep with a curly horn. I gave him my wool for his breakfast blanket warm. He wore my coat on Christmas morn. I said the sheep with the curly horn. I said the dove from the rafters high cooed him to sleep that he would not cry. We cooed him to sleep, my mate and I. I said the dove from the rafters high. And every beast by some good spell in that stable dark was glad to tell of the gift he gave Emmanuel, the gift he gave Emmanuel. Thank you, Donkey, for helping me. That was very good of you. Thank you for the kiss. days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
Thank you, choir. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you that you know exactly when to come to us. Thank you that Jesus is born at this very time in our very lives, at this moment in 2020, right when we need you most. Open our hearts and our minds and our eyes and our very souls so that we might experience you anew this Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So just a few days ago, I was working hard writing. I was buried in the house. My four-year-old was taking some special time on the couch, being able to watch TV, and the rest had run out to pick up some groceries. I came down to check on him, and it, he's like, Mom, go away. It was like he was pretending that he was home alone. And so okay, great. And I went back up and kept writing. When the rest of the family came back down or came back home, uh, we all gathered back in the family room where he had been watching TV. And we noticed, we're like, where did these two presents come from? Where, where did you get these? And in a really nonchalant attitude, he said, the lady with the Santa mask. And we're like, the lady with the Santa mask? And he's like, yeah, the lady with the Santa mask. She came to the door. And we're like, a lady with the Santa mask came to the door and you opened the door and you received these presents. And he's like, what? Yeah, the lady with the Santa mask. <laughs> and we're like, okay, four-year-old child, don't worry, he will absolutely never, ever, ever, ever do that again. He's learned his lesson. Like, okay, four-year-old child, the lady with the Santa mask came to the door and you just opened it and she gave you these two presents. And he's like, yeah. He'd thoroughly ripped through the one that was had his name on it and received this Lego, little Lego Santa thing. Uh, and then he handed another one to his sister and said, this one's for you. That was certainly a surprising gift. The shepherds in our passage were also surprised. In fact, they weren't just surprised, they were terrified. In scripture, when the angels come and say, do not be afraid, we know that's exactly when we should be very afraid because something amazing, breathtaking, beautiful and holy is about to burst forth. And so the shepherd's feelings of being absolutely terrified is probably right, even though the angels say, do not be afraid. 2020 has been really hard. Living through a pandemic is not something that we have ever done before. I've started to see the great Facebook memes about what we will reminisce in the future about the year we all ran out of toilet paper and had to go to desperate measures. But we will talk about this for a long time because it's been really hard. And I know there are things that we've all secretly enjoyed and that's okay too. A couple of people I knew in seminary just recently announced a big secret, but let me back up. 
she graduated from seminary and spent gosh more than a decade living up the single life in california which is not always easy and it took her quite some time to be ordained in a church that she absolutely loved a wonderful life and yet definitely some hard parts he met a seminary student they married had three kids absolutely facebook perfect life like walked out of a j crew commercial life uh, but tragically, his wife's bright smile was snuffed out by cancer a couple years ago. And in only the way that God can do, he brought together this single lady pastor and this newly widowed father of three. Of course, they connected on Facebook. He says, do you remember that night when we met, when we were in seminary, we practiced for that worship service? she's like, no, I don't remember. But their connections deepened, and they just announced their engagement. In the midst of deep brokenness and grief and loneliness, God finds us and surprises us, even if our first reaction is often fear. We are fearful because somehow we think that we are not worthy or lovable or able to connect with the divine. Mary and Joseph thought the same thing. Mary and Joseph were poor and unassuming. Who were they to be chosen as the ones who would bring forth the Son of God? Joseph was a carpenter and Everyone was a carpenter. They were a dime a dozen. We don't even know if Joseph was a good carpenter. And Mary was an unwed pregnant teen. We don't often talk about or focus on the census. It says, in those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. Mary and Joseph were counted. They knew that their lives mattered because they were being called to be counted. And even though they were homeless, even though they were about to have a baby in conditions that were not suitable for human habitation, they knew that their lives mattered because they were being called to be counted. And that, that is where God came. That is where God chose to be revealed most fully and truthfully in the person of Jesus Christ. If you find yourself in this year of 2020 alone or afraid or in a mess of a situation, you are in the right spot because that is where God comes, where Jesus surprises us and where we experience the holy divine. The call to be registered extends to us all. So let us make ourselves known, offer our services and jump into the revolution that comes with the birth of the Christ child. Because not only can you be surprised by the Holy Spirit, but you can be the surprise of the Holy Spirit. That is the gift that we receive and that we are able to give any Christmas, particularly this one in 2020. So it turns out the lady with the Santa mask was one of Santa's elves, I should have known. So there was nothing to be afraid of. My two kids had put letters into the Santa mailbox in front of the huge Rockford Christmas tree downtown, and two great Rockford businesses had supported the elves' journey to deliver exactly what they had asked for, a toy that looked like Santa and a squishy nothing to worry about, just Santa's great elves with a good surprise. 
May we not be held back by our fear of what is holy or by the circumstances of real life, but may we be open to being surprised by the Christ child and be willing to be the surprise for others. God is so good to us that God invites us into the place where Christ is born so that we can both be surprised as afraid as we may be and then in turn we can surprise others with this great gift of faith that brings peace and hope and love and joy thanks be to god merry christmas my friends
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Friends, let's turn to prayer. Just tonight, loving God, in the dark and cold, we give thanks for a baby born in the midst of a world in turmoil. We can recall the original dark spaces, the one your spirit hovered over, breathed upon, signifying all that would be possible, all that would come to life and be good. We journey towards this babe, perhaps unsure why, but hopeful, even if fatigued, that this one truly is the Prince of Peace, the one who can dispel the violence we see in this world, the one we wait for but who is never absent, for we can always find you among the lowly and the lonely, those sick to death and sick of life, the outcast and those in prisons. Use this dark space that covers us to not only refresh us but to restore us. Come in your power. Come in the weakness of an infant. Come, God, to make all things new. Before the light came, you knew us. You called us. You asked us to join in the work that is creation. And so with thanksgiving and praise, we turn to the words that many of us learned as children, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God comes to make all things new indeed. It is the Christ child that arrives, and we are grateful that our lives are forever changed because of it. The God who comes as a small baby boy is the one who calls us to bring peace, joy, hope, and love to this world. 
Does your gift tonight help participate in that saving process that God begun since the beginning of time? It is your way to say yes to God's kingdom. I'll just so friends, come and offer your gifts. Oh, the stone that the builders rejected became the cornerstone of a whole new world. The stone that the builders rejected became the cornerstone of a whole new world. The stone that the builders rejected, the stone that the builders rejected, the stone that the builders rejected. A grain of wheat may be knocked to the ground and suffer through the winter's cold, only to rise right up again and bear its seed a thousandfold. Oh, the stone that the builders rejected became the cornerstone of a whole new world. The stone that the builders rejected. loving God, thank you. Thank you for all the many ways that you bless us, and I pray that you would use these gifts, all of who we are, to bless the world and to help us seek after you. In Jesus' most precious name we pray, amen. On a night that was beautifully dark and pure, the God who ushered the universe into existence was born a tiny baby. That baby Jesus would disappoint, break rules, and be rejected. That baby would do justice, heal the sick and outcast, and reconcile humanity to the God of it all. We light candles tonight to shine light into that rich darkness so that we might get a glimpse of the baby Jesus. Please light your candles at home if you have them. 
May these lights warm your hearts and minds and open us to seeing Jesus in unexpected places. God of life and love, reveal yourself to us once more. God of the universe is about to burst forth as a tiny baby named Jesus, and we get to be a part of it. The world is about to turn, and we are invited to be a part of this good news. And so go out knowing that you are blessed and part of something that's bigger than any one of us could imagine or dream. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.
walks at night who hold throughout the heavens their shoes. Tell it all. 